I want to give you a little take after the fight uh, against Lesnar because we haven't had a chance to talk to you. And I, I don't know that I've really seen you react to this at all. Uh, a lot of people were mad at Lesnar for walking over while you were dazed and getting in your face. Uh, my take was, you know what, Frank talked a lot of trash. Guys are heated. Sometimes that happens. Um, did you get a chance to watch it? Because I don't think you knew where the hell you were at that moment or what he was doing. But was yeah. Lesnar being a, a you-know-what by walking across classless uh, and getting in your face? He was on the fight. He just act that way. That's the way, I mean, a lot of people around me, I think my friends and family were angry about it than I was. I look at it as, well, you know, I, I'm going to go back to the drawing board. I'm going to go win two or three fights in a row and get a rematch against him. And uh, I don't have to sit here and complain about it. I'll get an opportunity to get locked in the cage with him and get to show him what I felt about that. Right. All right, so no complaints on that. Uh, the rest yeah. of the card, real, real quick. Um, what do you think of Damian Maya? Because I, I thought going in that uh, in, in the short stints that we'd seen to stand up, it was terrible. And I didn't, I didn't really see how people were making a big case for him against a guy who's a pretty well-rounded fighter in Marquardt. Yeah, no, I mean, I really thought it was, that was going to be, I mean, obviously, every fight ends up being tougher and tougher. In the UFC, I really thought that was going to be an extremely tough fight for Damien. The minute I heard through the grapevine that that's what they were going to make it out to, I was like, wow, that's going to be a rough one. Um, just because, you know, Dame, or excuse me, Nate Marquardt is a legitimate black belt on the ground, um, good wrestler, phenomenal athlete, and also, you know, he obviously, it goes without saying, he can hit pretty hard. And it hits you from lots of different angles. I think he's a tough fight for anybody in the middleweight class. Um, so, you know, Damian Maia obviously is, you know, has a phenomenal ground game. But just knowing going into that, I was like, wow, you know, I don't see him, you know, the first time he gets Nate down submitting him. You know, he took a little bit to work out, you know, like, you know, uh, McDonald, who's also very skilled on the ground. But the difference was is McDonald doesn't really know for knocking people out on his feet. So I figured even if it went to the ground a couple times, Nate Marquardt would, you know, do well there and survive and stay out of any trouble. And every time they're on their feet, you know, it's a threat for Damien to get caught. And obviously, you know, that's what happened. Do you think they should make Silva fight Henderson or Marquardt? Those guys have to fight each other. And what do you think of Silva constantly calling out new weight classes? Now he's mentioning fighting heavyweight. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think Henderson Silva is, is a phenomenal fighter. I mean, man, after that performance against Forrest, what can't you say about him? Uh, if he wants to move to heavyweight, I, mean, I would enjoy actually being able to compete against him just for the reason being. I mean, it's like saying, hey, uh, you know, Michael Jordan wants to play in a one-on-one -on -one court. Do you want to play against him? Well, of course. Why wouldn't I? I think everybody who is on our level always wants to compete against the best they can compete against. And to fight against Anderson Silva, I mean, especially for someone like such as myself as a heavyweight, I think that would be a phenomenal fight because I'm not – you know, a huge heavyweight where I'm just going to pin him on the ground and suffocate him. Um, out of all the heavyweights, I probably have one of the weaker double leg or single, you know, takedown uh, offenses. And I think it would be mostly, you know, doing stand up, which obviously would be to his advantage, you know. So I think it would be, a, you know, I would definitely like to fight it. And then as far as for who I'd like to see him fight at middleweight, I think Nate Marquardt, you know, really does possess the greatest threat to him. I think the first time they fought, he might have been taken a little bit off. and I would be really interested to see what would happen if those two faced each other again. You think Henderson would have a chance if they fought? Henderson against Marco or Henderson against Silva? Both. Uh, yeah, well, Henderson's just a very game competitor. Obviously, he has a very powerful right hand. You know, we've just seen that again in his last fight. Uh, great wrestling. And I think he did very well against Silva the first time. Uh, you know, in the first round, you know, I think I was the first round to, to Dan Henderson when they fought. Um, I think that uh, that gave him a lot of confidence, and then um, I think that if he fights, you know, a smart battle, yeah, he could be a very game competitor. All right, so what's going on with you? You back in training, and we saw some rumored fights. Do they have anything set for you? Yeah, you know, talk back and forth, you know, but obviously it's three or four months out, so you know things change from day to day. So uh, right now, obviously, yeah, I'm training. I mean, the one thing I really took from the last fight against Brock was that, you know, I, I love boxing and I train diligently at that. I love jujitsu. I train diligently at that. But I think that the one area of my game that I'm really lacking at is just, you know, is physical power, just training, lifting heavy weights and explosives, being a powerful athlete. I think that uh, you have to look at athletes around them that, you, or that are successful, and one of them that I can point to is George St. Pierre. You know, his physical athleticism that he's built upon in the gym is one of his greatest attributes. So and uh, in the fight with Brock, I really felt that there was a huge difference in strength and power. So I definitely, you know, being 245, I just don't think I'll ever be able to compete with him at that weight. I have to put on, you know, and not just sit at the kitchen table with my wife and eat a bunch of pasta and get heavier, <laughs> but actually, you know, you know, I've been training with Mark Philippi now. Uh, it's here in Vegas, you know, uh, his institute, uh, you know, uh, Philippi uh, Sports Institute. 
So, I mean, it's opening up my eyes to a whole lot of other, uh, you know, just my base athleticism, getting more powerful, being able to jump up higher and, 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 and move a lot quicker. Last one, about 20 seconds. Will Brock be the champion after he faces Carwin? You know what? I really think that's going to go either way. Both those guys are big, powerful individuals. And when you have guys that hit as hard as they do, swinging for each other, and I think the wrestling is going to cancel itself out. I really can't say one guy is a better wrestler than the other. You know, I mean, obviously I'm not the expert in wrestling. But uh, I think that it's going to be whoever ends up hitting who on the chin first. All right. Because whoever falls to their butt, I don't see either one of them be able to get the other guy off of them. All right, Frank, nice spot. Let's talk to you again, and uh, we, right, pre- we appreciate the honesty. Oh, no problem. Thank you. Good spot. Frank Beer, former UFC heavyweight champ. How many times in the interview did he say he's not good at this or good at that? You don't hear guys say that often. He's not one for making excuses, and he doesn't like it when some, someone makes excuses for why they lost to him. I don't blame him.